As promised, we're now back from the break and we'll proceed. Okay, this is our planar metal oxide semiconductor technology. It's called planar because, uh, as you can see, it's quite flat. Uh, you'll become very, very familiar with this uh, schematic if you like. It's the basic NFET structure and it shows the gate, the drain, and the source contacts. Also illustrated here is this little oxide layer here that separates the gate from a semiconductor material, which will be the channel. This uh, will in fact be etched in your brain. And the reason that's funny is because the process that makes most of these layers involves some type of etching. Here it is again uh, in a little bit more detail, cut away with uh, some uh, uh, other uh, material properties shown of the technology, like the shallow trench isolation, so that basically uh, uh, prevents currents from flowing in the substrates and prevents problems that uh, plagued early CMOS such as latch up. Uh, so here you can see in this particular case we're showing a, an N-type transistor, so that's our N MOSFET and a P-type transistor over here which are P-type MOSFET. The N refers to electrons being the carrier, the P here refers to the holes being the carrier. The other things you'll note is that the P-type device is in an N-well and the N-type device is effectively in a P-well, although I guess that's not quite shown there. It's quite easy to remember how these are typically connected up in a CMOS uh, structure in that they have a common drain, particularly if it's an inverter. So the drains are common or connected together. Uh, reasons for the STI, or this shallow trench insulation, um, I believe is, uh, as I mentioned, to prevent latch up and, and uh, things that really don't concern us as a, as a as designers that are using the technology, but certainly are very important in terms of the technology itself. There's a couple more schematics of the, the uh, MOS device. Maybe a little bit more detail here, sort of showing the uh, uh, a gate material, N+, plus, uh, oxide layer down here, which is shown to be quite thin, and then the source in the drain region, and some other material characteristics which are required to make the device function at uh, such small scales. So this is our N-type transistor, the carrier negative, as I said before. This is our P-type transistor, essentially identical to the to the N-type, except the carrier is different, and and basically the the polarities in which we use it are going to be uh, different, upside down, if you like. Here's a symbol that uh, you might see for the MOS transistor. Often we'll remove this body contact or substrate contact. Um, but it'll be clear because it doesn't have that little ball over here that's associated with the P-type device, and that really just refers to the device being being active low as it would with any other type of logic you're looking at. And that other symbol there really just represents the, the PN junction, so it makes it a little bit more clear uh, perhaps how it's connected up. So the MOS uh, transistor is a MOS field effect transistor, and uh, it, it's created at the front end of line and that's with respect to its uh, production or processing. So the front end of line is sometimes called it FEOL. It's the N-type, N-MOSFET or N-FET. I'll typically just call it N-MOS device. It's a P-type well, N-plus type uh, source and drain, so conducting N-plus and uh, the gate is also doped N-plus. The P-type, or P-MOSFET, or P-FET, I'll just call a P-MOS device. It's an N-type well with a P-plus type source, drain, and gate. So the N-plus and the P-plus doping in the drain, gate, and source are required for relatively low resistance, almost metal-like uh, properties for the semiconductor. Otherwise, they would be very resi resistive. Uh, current MOS technologies, the gate, the source, and the drain are psilocytic, so they're metalish. Uh, it doesn't really concern us in great detail here, but it's always good to be familiar with some of the, the terminology. So it's basically uh, uh, the silicon in the gate material is reacted with a metal, maybe cobalt or titanium, perhaps something even more uh, exotic. Uh, psilocytes are metallic, metal like, and uh, basically allow you to perform, form ohmic contacts when you have to you know, contact the source and drain regions which are N plus and P plus depending on the type of transistor. So the gate would perhaps be made using a chemical vapor deposition process and that forms a polycrystalline silicon so it's often called the polylayer and that you'll see quite often used as a term for the gate. 
uh, the gate usually receives the same doping as a sore strain and they're, all, uh, they're also psilocytic. Uh, the gate insulator is it says usually SiO2, it's probably something slightly fancier than that and that you can certainly find out on that technology roadmap. Uh, typical oxide thicknesses are now below I put 50 to 25 angstroms, I'm not too sure of that, I'm pretty sure they're below 50 but below 25 seems like it would be uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Anyway, uh, following along here with the back end of line, let's say after the transistors are deposited, uh, basically you have wiring layers, and this is a, on the on the right here is shown a photomicrograph of an actual cutout section of a of an integrated circuit. Uh, it has uh, you know potentially a dozen metal layers for routing. This one sort of shows six layers, and uh, a few things you can note is that the transistor does seem relatively small compared to the technology required in the back end of line, which is very, very complicated. Um, this is where a lot of CAD tools spend a lot of time in, in uh, routing your chip as opposed to you know, building the transistor itself. Uh, a couple of things to note is is you have uh, basically vias and you have routing interconnect areas and usually as you get higher up in the structure the, 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 the metal layers become a little bit thicker. Uh, reasons for this perhaps include, uh, you know, perhaps they have to carry greater current, so they have to be able to handle greater, greater current densities. Uh, they're perhaps spanning larger portions of the chip, so you perhaps want lower resistivity. And the other thing you'll note is that there's sort of these vias that are, are built between the layers, allowing you to connect from one layer to the other. Uh, and the, the via looks like it's uh, basically a, a plug, and typically it's a plug that's put in here. Um, and at each time they make these layers, you can see they're all very flat. That's that a result of that um, chemical mechanical planarization that I mentioned before, which is effectively just polishing the surface to remove any of the irregularities which have been produced by the oxide layers. Anyway, very interesting technology, um, and you can sort of see how uh, you know many layers in a in a integrated circuit would look if you happen to cut through it and had a. Uh, scanning electron microscope at, at your avail. Uh, schematically, typically uh, many of the layout programs at a very low level allow you to draw polysilicon uh, regions and they represent different layers. So this, this red thing here would represent the polysilicon gate. The green perhaps represents diffusion and wherever polysilicon would cross this diffusion a transistor would be formed and it would be sitting in a well. And uh, one of the questions you might ask yourself, what is a well? But the well is just a, a doped uh, region that allows you to hold an N or a P type transistor, and it's obviously the, the opposite uh, doping that the transistor is. Uh, MOS transistor switches, they basically can be viewed as being simple on or off. Um, that's not 100% certain, but or it's not accurate, but it, it's uh, close enough for our purposes, as they say. Uh, so it's either going to be on or off, and the, and the operation of the switch is controlled by a, a voltage on the gate. So that gate voltage will be the higher low. So typically, uh, a logic zero uh, might be um, a low voltage. Uh, the device might be off if it's an n-type transistor. Uh, so we might represent that as zero ground or VSS. A one or a high would be on. Perhaps we have 5, 3.3, 1.5 volts, etc., and typically represented as VDD. So here's some of the switching characteristics, which you probably are familiar with from other courses uh, when you did uh, electronics courses previously. Here's our NFET device, our NMOS device, and what's represented here is the gate being at zero, so the switch is open, so there's no contact between the input and the output, let's say, and as a consequence, you don't know what the output is. When you have a 1 on the gate, on the other hand, it, the switch is closed, and if you have a, a 1 on the input, you actually have a poor 1 on the output. You might remember that. Um, if not, we'll look at reasons for that in a while, but it's really a, a threshold voltage effect. On the other hand, if you have a 0 on the input, you have a very good 0 on the output, and that's why N-type devices are good for pulling an output low. Our PFET device, on the other hand, there's a little symbol there with the circle that helps us recognize as a PFET. It has, in this scenario here, the gate equal to zero, so that means the switch is closed. And in this case, the zero comes through as a poor zero, which means it wouldn't be able to pull something down all the way, but it's very good for pulling something up. One comes through as a, a good one. And on the other hand, if the gate is a one, 
for the p-type device gate is a one it's going through that little active uh, low symbol there uh, would mean that this device is off or it's open and if we have uh, a one or a zero on the input we'd have a one or a zero um, indeterminate on the output and they're uh, good or poor for for uh, passing ones and zeros for for uh, different reasons so the just to summarize NFET uh, NMOS switch the gate is one the switch is on or closed the drain and source are connected and current can flow from the source to drain as you'd expect when the switch is closed when the gate is zero the switch is off or open the drain and source are disconnected and there's no current path from uh, uh, drain to source so for the PFET device it's exactly the opposite so it's our PMOS device. When the gate is one, the switch is off or open. The drain and source are not connected. No current can flow from the source to the drain. When the gate is zero, the switch is closed. The drain and source are connected. And current can then flow from the source to the drain. So in this case, it makes sense when you talk about the source and the drain because it's the source of holes and it flows from the source to the drain. And that's why the current would be positive in that sense. Uh, MOSFET switching. The uh, NFET and MOS switches are good for passing logic zeros, poor for passing logic ones. The PFET or PMOS devices are good for passing logic one, poor for passing logic zero. This is why the N pull down and the P pull up. So every time you see a CMOS circuit, where there's a NAND gate, or a NOR gate, or an XOR gate, or whatever gate it happens to be, you typically have the pull-down section made of n-type devices, the pull-up section made of p-type devices. If you needed a switch that's good for passing both a logic 0 and a logic 1, you could use a parallel combination of the n-FET and p-type devices. It's the, uh, the basic concept of a CMOS complementary uh, switch and possibly uh, the next generation of a, an FPGA switch because you run into these problems of uh, if you just use a single transistor to act as a switch you get some voltage degradation. So here's the CMOS switch. It's a parallel and NFET device. Uh, it has you know some disadvantages in, in that it took a little bit more area of course. Both of these transistors are sitting in their respective wells but as you can see it's good for passing a both a 0 or a 1. If you're passing a 1, the N-type device does the heavy lifting. If you're passing a 0, the P-type device does the heavy lifting. The other thing to note is that it's activated by complementary signals. So it is a little bit more complica complicated to implement. Uh, time for another break. And as promised, or I will promise, I will be back. Thank you.